So I'm going to be talking mainly about memes. Um, and not only memes, but how we can use memes to counter uh, misinformation. Okay, so the term meme originated, it actually was from an evolutionary biologist, Richard Dawkins, in his book, The Selfish Gene. And it actually is a cultural unit that is shared and evolved. So we can see how kind of the seeds of what we think of and we know of memes today, it's a bit of cultural information that kind of is transmitted um, mainly over the internet today. So this was when Dawkins coined it, it was talking about catchphrases, fashion, anything that was cultural and how it would sort of evolve and change through kind of exchanges of the mind. And that led to um, mimetics. So now the memes that we're accustomed to are internet memes. So this is a really good example of a meme. This is Gr Grumpy Cat. Um, one of the most famous memes that kind of started off this meme revolution. And an internet meme, it really does refer to any small bit of information. So videos, GIFs, images, but this particular type of meme with this superimposed text, an image with superimposed text is called an image macro. And that is the meme that I think most of us think of when we hear the word meme. And it's also what I'll, I'll, I will mainly be focusing on when I'm referring to memes. So just to give sort of an idea, I did a very kind of um, broad overview of just the search term for the word meme over the past 10 years, just to sort of see when it started to get more popular. And you can see kind of 2011, it started to slowly and um, slowly and consistently rise. Um, and we can see how different it was in 2008. It was pretty much non-existent on Google searches. And now we can see it's much higher. So memes are really designed for sharing. So even going back to the original idea of memes, it's something that they're intended with, they're created with the intent to share. So it's not something that should be used or consumed um, independently, but something that is designed to be shared. And social media provides us with a forum for all of this sharing. And then what happens is that memes can, memes and other types of information can go viral, which there's not quite a, um, specific definition of what it means to go viral, but we know that it means it might be a certain amount in terms of number of views, it might be 100,000 views. Some people argue that it's a million views, um, but then some people think viral means within a few days it might be shared 40,000 times. So it's just this idea of going viral that it's something that becomes extremely popular um, extremely quickly and it kind of spreads over the internet like wildfire. So. Because of that, memes have kind of been hijacked and have been used also to share misleading or false information. Um, anyone can create a meme, so this is problematic, so there's no editorial control or fact checkers, just like pretty much any information on the internet that can be created. Um, it only takes a few moments to create a meme. Um, I have a meme generator here, so I don't know if it's gonna open. But we can see how quick and easy it is to create a meme. And if you just Google meme generator or meme maker, you'll see how many different meme makers pop up. So this is one, this is IMG Flip. And they have popular meme images, or you can search for a meme. I'm just going to click on this um, really popular image that has been used for memes of SpongeBob. And I can just type in any text. Oh, it's not up. Okay. I don't want to take up too much time trying to get to it, but it's very simple to create a meme. It's just almost like Googling an image. You type text in, it appears right on the meme, and then it automatically has a ton of different widgets to share to different social media sites. So it's really very simple to do, um, which is probably why memes, there's so many of them, and they're shared so quickly. And they're especially easy to find once you start adding hashtags. So I'd actually like to do a little bit of an interactive game. So two truths and a lie meme edition. So just so we can get an idea of what it's like to see memes with false information alongside memes that have true information and how it can actually, even for information professionals, how it can be not as easy as we might think to pick out that meme, which one is false. So I have three memes here. One of them has false information, the other two are true. So does anyone want to take a gander at which is the false meme? 
How many people think it's the Benjamin Franklin quote? How about William Shakespeare? Okay, how about Confucius? So it looks like we think Shakespeare is the fake one. So it's actually the Benjamin Franklin one. Um, this quote was said by George Washington, and I was actually inspired to create this set of memes with the quotes because I have actually seen many quotes um, that have been attributed to different people on memes and then shared, so the same quote. So it's one thing that it seems like it could be have said by Benjamin Franklin. We might see if someone says that and then starts sharing it and sharing it, and then all of a sudden we have a mass amount of people who are misinformed about this quote. Okay, I have two more little meme examples for our game. So these are more kind of technology related, um, have some stats on them. So we have 59% of American parents feel their teenage children are addicted to their mobile, mobile devices, and then 27% of those parents feel they are also addicted. Then we have the cat on the laptop. Only 14% of Americans use laptops to access the internet. The other 86% use smartphones and tablets. And then the percentage of US adults using social media has more than tripled in the past decade. So how many think that the 59% of American parents is a lie? How about, okay, a couple. How about the 14% of Americans using the desktop? And how about the percentage of US adults using social media? Okay, so most of us got that one. This was actually a statistic I completely fabricated. Um, I thought because there's if I can completely fabricate a statistic, then anyone can in creating a meme, um, and then it sort of immortalizes it forever on the internet. And then one final example, we have something for vitamin D supplements, dramatically reduces the risk of dementia. 25% of adults had at least one heavy drinking day this past year, and about one in five American youths are considered obese. So who thinks the vitamin D is the false one? How about the 25% of adults and the one in five American youths. Okay, so we were kind of split, but a lot of us did seem to get this one as false. And this one is actually kind of misleading because all the statement on the meme is false, but it's actually coming from some information that it's kind of an exaggeration of information that might be true. So it's a little bit more of a misleading one. So it's not 100% false, but there's just kind of not enough scientific evidence type. So, the reason why memes, I think, have become, really started to become a vehicle for misinformation, we really saw it in the past two presidential elections. Um, <laughs> this isn't the only place where it's popped up. There's, I mean, there's countless studies also of all of the memes and kind of internet culture that went on with those elections. But just in general, it seems that people are using memes for controversial topics and to put out information that might be exaggerated, it might be taken out of context, or it might just kind of suit their um, belief and they wanna share it by using a meme and it will appear as fact. And I kind of put down a little bit here about fake news. Fake news, I think memes are showing fake news, but it's this idea, it's not only strictly fake news, but something that might be misleading, taking it out of context, or it even could be considered something that's satire, but maybe doesn't have enough context for viewers to figure that out. And this is obviously a real issue. These are just a few examples of memes that are all, they all contain false or misleading information. And these are actually, I took these from Snopes.com, which got hidden a little bit there by that meme. But these were all memes that circulated enough on the internet and had false information that Snopes, which is a really reputable fact-checking website, actually had to kind of investigate in the facts. Um, and it might be a little bit hard to see, but some of these are images that are true images. So this image up here is an actual image of the State Department, but there's false text on it all the way in the top uh, right over there, just photoshopped images. So we can see how people are getting really creative and kind of creating these memes to sort of serve an agenda. So then creating memes can be understandable if you wanna to try to put this information out there, but why are so many people sharing misinformation and sharing all of these memes? Um, since I'm an academic librarian, I'm most interested to see why college students are doing it because I've seen them do it. Um, and I did find a few studies that show that college students seem to be particularly susceptible to sharing these types of memes. Um, and many college students also witness their friends on social media sharing this type of false information. So why are they sharing it? Some of them stated it's just interesting if a meme catches their eye and they think it might be 
elicit some type of reaction from their followers, they'll go ahead and share it. Sometimes it's for their own confirmation bias. A lot of times people on Facebook will follow Facebook groups that have to do with whatever their ideology is and the memes will pop up on that group and then people will share those memes because they confirm their own beliefs. Oftentimes they're just provocative. It might just elicit some type of strong response and they maybe want to spark a debate or have other people tell them if the information is true or not. So they're kind of just share that meme to see what information comes back to them. Um, but one thing that is particularly troubling is that accuracy wasn't cited as a high priority. So it wasn't one thing that people were really thinking about, especially these college students. On, it wasn't something they were concerned about, was determining whether or not it was accurate before they went ahead and shared the meme. It just wasn't something that they were too worried about. Also, we have a, an extra layer of issue, which is how algorithms are, will kind of move things around, a Facebook algorithm based on what you like and what you will um, engage with on Facebook that will change what comes up in your newsfeed and also bots. So social media bots, there might be an advertising company that creates a bot that will then share a specific meme and then it kind of feels like it's even getting taken out of our hands. So it's no secret that students often lack information literacy skills. Um, it provides extra challenges for librarians because it's shared so easily and rapidly that now there's so much information that we need to make sure that we can instruct them on how to evaluate this information, not just take everything at face value. So there is a lack of information gatekeepers and um, editors on the internet, but this is both good and bad because we're getting Anyone could have a voice, it's a great democratizer, right? Everyone can put their information and put their opinion on the internet, but it also can be an issue because there's such an information overload and so many voices that it can be hard to weed through all of that and find what is actually credible. Um, one thing is that a lot of people seem to be assuming that because, especially co high school, college age students are digital natives, so it assumes that, well, they know how to use the internet, so they should know that this, it, it's, it should be very kind of um, second nature for them to understand that you can't just take everything on the internet for face value, but it's actually not the case. Um, and this is, can even be considered a threat to our democracy, right? Because if we have such a misinformed society, there comes many issues with that. Um, and a, another major problem is that once that misinformation becomes viral on the internet, once that grumpy cat meme that has false statistics is out there, it's really hard to correct it and call that information back. And memes are also kind of ephemeral because they're, they're out there and they get shared and shared and then all of a sudden they could disappear and we, we can't trace them. They're usually anonymous, right? We don't know who's creating them. So one thing that we can do as librarians um, is to battle this skepticism. We have a responsibility to teach information literacy. Um, in the ACRL framework, it does talk about different um, formats of information, right? So we have to recognize that memes are being, we've, we've kind of subtly seen an increase of how memes are shared and used to share information. They're not only for entertainment anymore, so it's something that we have to pay attention to and kind of battle to prevent this misinformation from spreading. Or at least equip our users with the ability to evaluate that information and not just kind of accept everything as true. So it's always good to use various, um, various methods to teach this. And a lot of times checklists are what are kind of, especially, I mean, ACRL even encourages, and we all know about the crap test and all these different ways to kind of teach people how to go through this checklist, but that's kind of ignoring all of these different formats and we need to pay attention to how we can also battle misinformation when it comes in the shape of this image of something that might be familiar to someone with a, you know, some small bit of text kind of slapped on there. So my maybe one solution to this would be to, that we actually create memes to encourage skepticism. So this meme I didn't create. Um, again, since memes are anonymous, I don't have really a way of finding out who made it, but I have seen it circulated a lot on different library Facebook pages. And it's an image of the Hulk, so super popular. The Avengers is incredibly popular. But instead of the Incredible Hulk, this is the Credible Hulk who says, you won't like me when I'm angry because I back up my rage with facts and documented sources. So it's kind of, it even kind of ties into our library as propaganda idea because it's, it's, a, it's a positive um, 
it's a positive idea and it's we're trying to get across this skill, but we're sort of using these methods that I almost think are kind of like an academic clickbait. We're trying to pull them in using a hook, using something that's super popular, but putting information on there that's encouraging people to evaluate their information. So we saw how easy um, it can be to create a meme, and since they're so succinct and they're visual, they're very easy to find in a social media feed. So I think it would be a really good tool that we can use to just encourage information literacy. Whether or not we call it that, the users don't have to know that that's what we're teaching them. They're just seeing this meme and thinking, well, maybe I should pay, Why? what do you mean back, back things up with sources? I haven't thought about that before, and it's sort of grabbing their attention. And memes are already being used in education. They're being used in library marketing. I haven't really seen too much in the literature about them being used um, kind of to teach this um, skepticism, but they are being used in education, so it just seems like a natural kind of transition to use them for this reason. I put a couple of tips for creating memes. I am by no means a meme expert, but I've created a few for my own library we've kind of put on social media. I think using popular culture as a hook is just a good way to, again, grab attention. Using recognizable meme templates. So there's a kind of bunch of memes that are always circulating the internet. We always see the images of Grumpy Cat. We always see the images of, um, of Sean Bean in The Lord of the Rings from that one particular scene. So we've, we've seen them before, so maybe using these same memes and just changing the text in a way that will kind of slip a library message in there. Using humor when appropriate, I think, again, it kind of falls into this popular culture making something really engaging. Um, and it could even be something where you going back to how they're used in education, using it in, if you're especially for me in an academic library, maybe using them in my, my information literacy instruction classes to engage with students and kind of use it as a talking point. Um, even using images of your own library space, so creating memes, not necessarily from images that already exist, but creating your own. And then these are some websites I came across. So knowyourmeme.com is actually a database of popular memes, and you can see how popular a meme is at any certain time. Um, the second one and then one after that are both meme generators, but the memegenerator.net, also you can sort by popularity and see, well, what's popular today? What's popular of all time? What are the most popular images? If you don't know anything about memes and you don't know where to start, you can find some images of memes that are very popular and being used and then just change the text. These are just a few examples of memes that I created, just sort of quickly to give examples of how simple it can be to create. Um, the only one I didn't create was the Austin Powers. Um, but all of these others are images that are typically used for memes, and I just changed the text to kind of suit my librarian, um, not nefarious, but my sort of hidden agenda of getting people to just evaluate information and be skeptical. So just to kind of wrap up what I was talking about. These image macro memes, so the images with that superimposed text, they present new challenges. It's really hard to fight this information, this misinformation, since it's so easily spread. Um, internet users, they do have a hard time. A lot of the studies that I came across with students trying to find information, it, there is a clear lack of their ability to determine whether or not something is an advertisement or something is trying to, um, is sponsored by a specific organization, something is made up, completely fabricated, and they're not, the issue is that they're not looking up on their own, they're not doing their own fact checking. Um, so since they can be created and shared by everyone, I think that why not? Librarians could create these memes, encourage critical thinking, and I think it's a, it's a modern and I think simple way to kind of combat this misinformation. And that's it. We have about seven minutes for questions. I see one hand already. Hi, thank you. Um, you mentioned college students' susceptibility to sharing memes with disinformation, but I'm wondering, uh, something that comes to mind is this kind of meme being the modern day like chain mail that, that um, older um, folks who are on the internet might be susceptible to forwarding or um, like WhatsApp chains that are really popular for that. So I don't know if you have any experience with that um, or, or comments on that. So um, I definitely have seen that also. I think that um, 
I like to fight fire with fire. So I think if there's email chains going around with false information, create an email that, even if it's just an infographic with some don't believe everything that comes on an email chain and send it out. I think just really taking a method, any method that's used to kind of spread fake news and just flipping it and using it in the same way, I think that it's it's always good to do that because it's a recognizable format and it's relatively easy. So I think it works for memes, YouTube videos, chain emails. I think we can just create our own and kind of join the battle that way. How does citation fall into this? If a student is retrieving or a person is retrieving a meme online, not one that they've created, would you encourage them to cite it? I'm never going to say no to citing where they found information. I mean, I even, you can tell that I'm a librarian because I cited the Grumpy Cat meme um, and where I got it from. I think that. I also think that citations, to me, I find I use it as kind of a teachable moment because a lot of times I find students will try to cite something and figure out, well, but there's no author, but there's no date. And then I tell them, well, what does that tell you about the source you're using? If you can't find this information to cite it, then obviously there might be a problem. There might be maybe, how do you know that it's credible? Um, so that's, I mean, I would use it as a teachable moment and say, it's, I always say cite everything, but I, I also think, I mean, I put, because I, I specifically got this from one of the meme websites that I wanted to talk about since it shows memes that are popular and actually has a few um, crowdsourced articles, but a few information, a little bit of information about where, where this meme came from, kind of where it started. Um, this one actually has background on Grumpy Cat and who, who he is, but I think that it's important to cite and then use that citation as well. What is a citation? It's not just there to kind of because we want you to cite a source and we're you know being a pain as librarians, but also how it can show you what. How do you know if a source is credible? It's it's another piece to the puzzle of figuring that out. Um, for the live stream audience, yeah. Can you hand that over? Yeah. So one of the things I'm interested from your perspective is about how medics can be hijacked. Uh, very easily, just even something like Know Your Meme, you can get in there as an independent editor to create a false origin story for a meme. One of the things that we notice is when the far right will create false origin stories for certain innocuous public memes that then can be infected. Uh, so about the hijacking and the purposeful and pleasurable spreading of misinformation by some of the young people that you're talking about, because a lot of the times you know, how, how can you determine from a sort of fact-checking perspective and encourage the sort of curtailing spreading disinformation on purpose? So one example that I, I don't know if you're alluding to this example, but the Pepe the Frog meme, um, that one is challenging because it's, some people would share this meme not realizing you know, the background and the, and the, the connotation that it has. And I think that um, for me, using something like a meme to kind of help teach how to evaluate and how to be critical is just one small kind of supplement to overall how we need to encourage this kind of really sh healthy skepticism and understanding that um, I th using multiple sources. If you see a meme, do a quick Google search, even if it can be hijacked, even if some information is hijacked by someone. I mean, there's that website, the um, Martin Luther King Jr. that was actually created by a white supremacist group. And teachers and librarians were citing it as, as not realizing how, who created it and how, because it had factual information on there, but it was obviously skewed. Um, so I think using, encouraging the use of don't just Google something, find a bit of information, and think, okay, cool, this proves my point, I know what it's about. Multiple sources, look through a few different articles. Can you find, I do the same thing when I tell students to, for fake news websites, can you Google the editors? Can you find, if you even if you do a Google search of kind of a headline, you'll find different, look at a few different articles and how they're covering it. And if you see that there's discrepancies, it's a red flag. So I think it's just, again, kind of, 
overall this our kind of goal to encourage the skepticism and just encourage I always say it's not it's not easy it's not meant to be easy to just take something and know that it's true it's just the information landscape that we currently live in so just doing kind of more broad and um, kind of rigorous searching for for information from multiple sources.